And finally, there are the unfair illegal tactics that the government uses to convict. Um, just quickly skip over some of this. Um, one of the things they do, and it was mentioned earlier, was to withhold exculpatory evidence. There's been many, many cases of that. It's almost standard practice now. One of the things that was very interesting to me was at some point the Inspector General of the Request of Congress went through and looked at the uh, practices of the surveillance systems throughout the United States, all these clandestine services, and they discovered that there was no way within these clandestine services uh, to turn over exculpatory information. These illegal surveillance systems could generate information which the prosecution can use to suggest that the person is engaged in some sort of criminal activity. But there was no way to identify in all this massive classified information, exculpatory information. Now, the, the uh, prosecution, the government, has an absolute responsibility to turn over anything. This is obviously only fair if they have stuff to indicate you're guilty. They also should turn over stuff to indicate that you're not guilty. But there was no way to do it. So the Inspector General said that the government has probably been breaking the law for some time now, and they should appoint a special prosecutor to go back and review all of these cases to see what they found. And my contention is that they actually took this, had a special prosecutor go back and look at all these cases. They find they're all manufactured from the beginning. They're all phony cases. They could throw them all out. Now, so far, Congress has not acted on that. Uh, last year, the, uh, oh, earlier this year, actually, the uh, Albany City Council passed a resolution asking the federal government to do just that, to go back and look at all these cases. And uh, so far, Congress has not acted either on the, what Albany says or on what their own Inspector General of the Department of Justice says. But that's something this coalition can do we can start to push for that kind of a resolution to get this thing um, reviewed, get these cases reviewed. Um, I want to just quickly address a couple of other issues. Uh, I think another thing this coalition can do is to work to change the material support laws so that they are not criminalized free speech. I think another thing that we need to do is um, I, I think it's absolutely shameless, outrageous, is the holding of people who are charged with a crime but have never been convicted of a crime, hold that in, in solitary confinement for months and months and years. We know that this amounts to torture, that people's mental state deteriorates after only a few weeks. So holding somebody for several years in jail in solitary confinement is a virtual, makes it almost impossible to get, for the person to get a fair trial. How can they represent themselves, cooperate with their lawyers, testify in court? This is something we need to change. Uh, we need legislation for it. And the conditions that people are held in jail afterwards, the CMUs and so on that you've heard so much about. Again, we need to be pressure on that. Uh, the government uses phony experts to parrot the government's theory of the case to the jury. Uh, the, there's mistranslations of documents by the government to make a case where there is no case. Uh, there are fake security issues. There are pressuring of immigrants, uh, immigrants in the Muslim community to spy on their own community by threats of what will happen to the green cards. You know, there's a whole long list of things that we as a coalition can do to raise in Congress how fairness can be returned to the system and how we can stop targeting people because of the political benefits that the, the politicians get from this kind of a legal attack on first the Muslim community and now on the peace community and eventually on probably the political left. So I thank you very much and I appreciate it.